All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, or Kaku Dash. I say double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone for teaching us his word in truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. And I'm the brother Gabar Yahweh Duff from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another lesson. And this lesson was inspired by a video that I was watching earlier with the possible bar and his video his his page is daily edification for uh subscribe and be edified you know as always the name of his lesson was understand one thing the top wicked elite of esau knows that the exact truth knows the exact truth of who we are whereas the vast majority of our people you don't know who you are you don't want to hear who you are uh it's a it's been a consorted effort which you're gonna get that definition there has been a consorted effort to uh, hide our true identity and nationality, as well as for these Edomites to hide their true identity and nationality. All right. They call themselves Romans at one point. They call themselves Greeks at another point. They call themselves English, Anglo-Saxons, Britons, Dutch, all of these different titles. They give themselves to hide themselves amongst the people. OK, they call themselves Jays. You know, the same exact people they, they destroyed, now they're down uh, fraudulently claiming to be. Okay, and this image that you see right here is a relief from the Ark of Titus, which commemorated the victory of uh, Titus and his son Vespasian. I'm sorry, or might have been Vespasian and his son Titus. Or Titus, uh, yeah, Vespasian and his son Titus, victory over the Israelites in 70 A.D. Starting it started around like 66, but they completely raised that, raised our ground to the, raised our land to the ground, and they they sacked the temple. And what you see is a bunch of Edomites, um, carrying off the Lord's property on their shoulders in victory and in triumph. And don't think for a second that these things, these relics aren't still around, or they don't still exist, because they do, and they are. They're, they're in these super elite private libraries, private museums, okay? And like Elder Apostle Gabar said in his video, the, they know that we're the Israelites, man. They know. And what prompted the Elder Apostle to do this video was this article right here. A brother had did a video, a short video on it. And uh, it was like the White House memo of 1969 uh, under Nixon called the Igbo Jews of West Africa. And this is a so-called small hat Henry Kissinger uh, saying these things, you know. All right. And this is from Oblong Media. And I looked this up, you know, and I found this article. All right. And it says, uh, it said uh, in the White House memo dated Tuesday, January 28th, 1969, the pre to President Nixon, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger described the Ebos as the wandering Jews of West Africa, gifted aggressive, westernized, at best envied and resented, but mostly despised by their neighbors in the Federation. Foreign Relations, uh, Foreign Relations Document, Volume E5, Documents on Africa, 1969-1979, right? And that's part of the curses that the, that our enemies, those, those natural Hamites that's in Africa, they didn't like us, you know? And it was the Yoruba people, there was the Israelites too, Okay, the Igbo people, the Asante, those are all Israelites. You got Ham scattered up there, but before before the Israelites came into uh, Africa, West Africa was in a place that was highly populated with uh, Hamites, man. You know, they were there, but they mostly settled. Well, you had the Arab invasion happen, so they took North Africa. This is later down after we fled into the interiors of Africa. But you, we always had strongholds in the ancient world. You hear about Alexandria, the Alexandrian Druze. You hear about how Yahweh Shai fled uh, King Herod's uh, threat on his life with his father and his mother, and they went into Egypt. And I'm sure they went to Alexandria, Egypt, because that's where a lot of Jews were at. And he was there until he was 12 and came back. Then we also had places like what is now Tunis, Tunisia or Tunis, which was used to be Carthage, which that was raised to the ground by Leo Scipio Africanus 
whom this whole continent was named after. So once Jerusalem fell, you had Israelites scattering to the east and to the west and to the north. All right. Some to the south. A lot of them went into Africa, established their own kingdoms. You know, and obviously over time and dispensation, we started worshiping these idols, other other gods like we were already doing in Ezra. But we started doing that following Islam through through the threat of death, you know. But there's many books out here that, that conclude that these people that were drugged into captivity and slavery to the Americas, North, Central, and South America, were the Israelites, are, were, and continue to still be the Israelites today. They're just going under other names. This is the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 25, verse 7. And pardon me, I'm a little under the weather. Um, this is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Right, because there has been an extreme uh, covering cast spread on all the people, especially the children of Israel, and a veil, a veil of truth that has not, well, there's a veil of lies covering the truth. All right, but the Lord is destroying that here in this mountain, Babylon the Great. Whereas we're telling you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashar Shai who we truly are. You know, and like Elder Apostle Gabar said in his video, um, ultimately the only ones that's going to get it and going to understand this word, hold on to it, is the elect of Israel. Anybody else amongst our people that can't get it, having a hard time with it, they're struggling with it, they're not going to get it. Don't want to get it, they're not going to get it. And they're going to have to die on this side in in this land of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. All right. But nonetheless, how is this? How is how is the Lord destroying the face and the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations by um, exploding this truth onto the world wide web through the prophets, the apostles, the elders, the bishops, through, through the prophets. OK. And that's what's happening. And again, there has been a consorted effort to hide our true nationality. All right. I was looking at a picture earlier. This is kind of off topic. I was looking at a picture of this guy named Prince Edward, and he looked just like uh, uh, Jacob Rothschild. And uh, I was thinking to myself, like Apostle Bar said, they um, they really they really are related. All them people are related, you know. And uh, <laughs> They look, they really are related, you know. I'll show a picture. I just want to show these Edomites acting like they're the, um, acting like they're the royalty of the world, which they are in this world because it's their world, but in the world to come, they're going to be nothing. All right? Yeah. This is guy right here. This is Prince Edward. Prince Edward of Kent. And this guy, this is this, and he's he he looks just like David Roth, uh, Jacob Rothschild. Man. He's a Rothschild, but they changed their names. They all German anyway. They're not the original royals that sat on them thrones in the in the Middle Ages. The original ones that sat on them thrones in the Middle Ages, who these people are claiming to be a part of, you know. And that's another thing too. Here in this world, they don't go deep into the Middle Ages, and if they do, they whiteize it, Edomize it, like they always do everything, you know. But there are books out here that tell you the truth. And this is Jacob Rothschild right here. I share this with the brothers and the brothers said they were like Edomites. And they are Edomites. There's Edomites in that picture, man. Yeah, yeah. Him and uh they never show a picture of this dude too young. He's always looked like Mr. Burns and shit. But yeah, these dudes look alike. Get a better picture, man. Yeah, these dudes look just alike, man, because they're family. They're brothers or cousins and and mix and mingled all up in there and shit. And they're claiming to be the Lord's people. She, uh, her, 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 the queen's, uh, piece of shit son, uh, King Charles, so-called, they were, he got coordinated and they were sitting on a rock that they claimed was Jacob's pillow. What, what that got to do with y'all? Why is it there? You know, these are the Edomites that rule the world and these are the ones that are coming up behind them, you know, to take their place when they should, shift back to the spirit world man 
you know, but by the time that happens, this place is going to be done away with. So let me get back on the topic because the real royalty of the world are the Israelites. They're not the Edomites. They're not the Edomites. And that's what these Edomites have been hiding, that we're the royal princes of the power, okay? We're Yasha Allah, okay? And no, we're not from Africa. We hid in Africa, Europe, Asia, Asia Minor, all over the place because we couldn't go home. The Lord expelled us from our land once and for all. And he used the Edomite armies, particularly the Roman armies, like today. These Roman armies are going to converge on the real Israelites when this thing goes down. Something that Apostle Gabar also mentioned in his video. But this time, Yahweh Bashar Shah is going to protect us. He's going to protect his elect. Okay, you're not going to touch the elect. Okay? And the Lord, Yahweh Bashar Shah, Yahweh is going to send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, to deliver his elect children out of here because you, Edomite, you stole everything. You know? You stole everything. This is, again, there's been a consorted effort. So when I keep, I keep using this term, consorted effort. Well, this is the definition of consorted effort. It says a mutual contrived or agreed on concerted effort, a concerted agreement. And what did they do to concert, concertly agree? Well, um, they agreed to hide who we are. It's the book of Psalms, chapter um. 83 verse 1, a song of, a song or a psalm of Asaph, keep thou not silence, O heavenly Father, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O heavenly Father, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, who are our enemies, these other nations, we're talking about the nation of Edom right now, but all these nations outside of Israel are our enemies, our, our greatest enemy is Esau, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, they hate, they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Who are the ones that hate the Lord? These nations, because he didn't choose them, right? He didn't bless them, not the way that he, he's blessed Jacob and how he will, you know? They have taken crafty counsel, that consorted effort. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones, you see? So we where were we hidden at? We were hidden in plain view, but we didn't know who we were because we were discontinued from our heritage. Uh, the NLT says they devise crafty schemes against your people. They conspire against your precious ones. Exactly. Okay. That's what they do. What are they conspiring? To take us down, to take us over, to destroy us, to not let us know who we are, to not uh, give us the true knowledge because they know, and they know that the super elite know that they're not the Israelites. They know that they're Edomites. But they think that they're going to form a, a, a technological technological uh, kingdom that's going to stand forever. A technological kingdom that's built off of wickedness and evil and Satan worship. And that's not so because this planet is not Satan's. This planet, is, this planet, the universe, and everything in it and outside of it belongs to Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai. Okay, Satan is a son of the Most High on the left-hand side. And right now, he's been allowed to... Uh, um, have authority through his Edom, through this, through his children, the Edomites, but that authority is soon going to be quashed. All right. So let's go back to Psalms 83. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. <clears throat> they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel, Yasha Allah, may be no more in remembrance. Right. And you hear the term Israel. Yasha Allah, but you don't hear us as a nation of people no more. You don't hear us as a uh, the 12 tribes, you know. You hear the state of Israel, the, the small hats, you know, but you don't hear us as a nation together. They call you something different. You know, either if you're from the Northern Kingdom, you're a Latino, Hispanic, Native American. All the searching that Esau has done in this world to find all manners of things in this world, all, th all the things that he's done, you try to tell me that this man, didn't come across no relics, no artifacts that showed that we're the Israelites. Come on, man. Come on, son. It was it was all manners of things here. They have the lost moon and stone in Mexico. Nobody asks any questions about this. Nobody you don't hear it in a history class. Okay? You probably gotta take some type of arch uh, archaeology course to uh to even get uh to even get uh any glimpse of this, you know?
but this stone right here is written in Paleo Hebrew, all right? Although it may look a little archaic, it is written in Paleo Hebrew. Let me see if I can blow this up so you can see it. And this is in this is in Mexico. You trying to tell me some Edomite came from somewhere and decided to put the Ten Commandments on 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 a on a, on a rock relief? Uh, no, did not happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right here, and you can clearly see the name of the Lord written right here, Yahweh. And it's, it's it's in other places here too, like right here, Yahweh. You know. And at one time, they had a video on the internet, on YouTube, where the Edomite going into this, breaking it down, reading it, saying, don't take the Lord's name in vain. La'ah, you know, La'ah, not to take the name of Yahweh in vain. So this is in America. But you don't hear nothing about this. You got uh, um, Paleo-Hebrew. Uh, um, etchings on mountain on the side of mountains in South America. You don't hear nothing about that. Why? Because there has been a concerted, consorted effort to hide our identity. Like Elder Pastor Gabar said, you cannot tell a lie if you do not know the truth. You just cannot do that. Now, a lie can be repeated so many times by the people who had no, who weren't in on it, you know, and they believe it. You tell a lie. Long enough, people will believe it. But those at the top, the super elite, they know what time it is. They do. And that's why they're preparing for the second coming of Yahweh Shai. That's why they're preparing for the, the onslaught of the Lord's people. That's why they're preparing for, for, for judgment. You know, because these super elites, they're going to be the first fruits of slavery, man. Okay? They're going to be the first fruits of captivity. Okay, and ain't no sellout nigga going hey, going to protect them. Okay, ain't nobody's gonna be able to cool the the wrath of the Lord's word. I mean, the wrath of the Lord's down with smooth words. That's not gonna happen. All right, this is a different Jacob Rothschild, but you know they probably just picked that name because it, it was his name, you know. But it doesn't matter. This Rothschild right here, you know, he he didn't he didn't respect this nigga King Charles. Because he's over King Charles, man. You got a, you had a picture of Evelyn, Evelyn, <laughs> Evelyn the Rothschild, and King Charles, and this dude poking his man in his chest, man. This King Charles, this is the Crown Prince, man. You know what I'm saying, the Crown Prince. But this man is so high up on a totem pole that he could poke his man in a tie, and he not take, he not even glimpse or or grimace or 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 or, or feel any type of way. He'll say, oh, we were just, we we're just close friends. I wonder why, because these are the ones that put you in power, the super elite. And they claim that this devil is dead, but we'll see, because he's going to be very much alive in captivity. Huh? Him and all his family. Ain't going to be no, uh, you know, uh, giving awards out and all the smiles and all that other empty rhetoric, man. You notice that everybody in the world bowed to this nigga and his mother, but they don't, the super elite don't. And he won't think of getting outside of line, okay? Because they he knows where side of the bread his butter is 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 is, is on. But again, this is another consorted lie that these people are the royalty of the world. You know, any nation that was ever great that ever did something had to be so called white, right? Had to be an Edomite. Look at these filthy demons. These look like straight up witches, man. What is this? What the fuck is this, man? You know. Look at that. That's a woman? Who the fuck lay down with that? And made a gullum. You know? But they're, they're, that's these people, man. Look at them. Rewarding uh, 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 Jacob Rothschild. You know? Rubbing on his chest. Giving him an award and shit. You know? But these motherfuckers, these are the ones that rule the world. Prince Charles heir to the British throne getting poked in the chest by Evelyn the Rothschild. Right? But that's neither here nor there. That's another story for another time. Let's go back to Psalms. Verse 4, uh, Psalms 83 and 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more may be no more in remembrance. All right, let me see what it says in the NLT. It says, uh, come, they say, let us wipe out Israel as a nation. And this is what they're doing. 
through their medical industry, through their prison in industry, through their food and water industry. Every industry you can name is geared to destroy the children of Israel. Come, they say, come, they say, let us wipe out Israel as a nation. We will destroy the very memory of, of, of his existence. So this is the reason why the vast majority of the people of the world do not know, including Israelites, do not know or believe that we are the Israelites, man. Because they pushed that memory out of the memories of the people, which really it was the Heavenly Father that did that. That was another curse that was levied upon us. But he used these nations to do it. But that don't mean he's not going to judge them. Okay, in this book, Ebo's uh, uh, Hebrew Exiles from Israel, this is off a of page, I've had this book for some years, this is off a of page, um, yeah, uh, this is off of page 54 in the book, Ebo's Exile, Hebrew Exiles from Israel, Amazing Facts and Revelation. It says, uh, off of page 54, Jewish origin of the Ebo's perspective from history and divine revelation. The first British explorers who met the Ebo's of Nigeria were quick to identify them as a branch of Hebrews. And this is this, uh, they have the uh, reference in here. And so simply referred to them as Hebrews, Hebo's, Ebo's, and later Ibo's. But during the time of the first documentation of, of the history of the Ebo's, the early Ebo's who knew very little or no English. Remember the, the Lord said he's going to send a nation whose tongue thou cannot understand. That happened with the Romans and it happened with these other Edomites. Following the pronunciation of the new version of their original name by the colonial masters deviated from the name uh, Ivite as an Ivite uh, Argulari from Ivrit, Ephit and Ihite and began to use the popular new foreign language of the colonialists and so also referred to themselves as Hebo, Hebo, the corruption of Hebrew or accepted to be called Hebo, Ebo or Ibo as a way of associating themselves slacking, <laughs> with the emergent new culture of the colonial masters. This corrupt version of English word Hebrew remained unnoticed or was deliberately allowed to remain unchanged even when noticed by the British authorities so as to serve as a mark of derogatory distinction between the European Hebrews or the mostly whites and the Nigerian Hebrews, right? Because at, you can't have two nations of people calling themselves the Hebrews because then people are going to wonder, well, wait a minute, what's going on? But as this man's power started to wane, he had to shuffle in some people. So what did he do? He went to fucking Ethiopia and brought back Beta Israel. You know what I mean? Or they call them Falashians, which means fake false. Right? Because he couldn't get away from the fact that the Israelites were a dark skinned people, particularly the house of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right? But some people that of, of so called ne Negroid descent and those Hamites there claiming to be the Lord's people, they don't have any power in, in the state of Israel today. They don't hold any sway or of anything. Okay? So it says, um, it says, uh, Hebrews who mostly, let me read that again. Off of page 54, it says, the European Hebrews who are mostly whites and the Nigerian Hebrews who are mostly blacks. And henceforth, all the hist the early history works or books on the Ebos bore the corrupt version of Hebrew. That was Hebo or Ebo, Hebo nation, Ebo slaves, Ebo of Eastern Nigeria. All right. And they have the quotations from the references in this book. So these people, they know. And books like this, they don't get popular amongst people because Jake don't like to read, you know. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashar I bought this book when I first came in in the faith. And uh, they even had a, a slave poster, which was later changed to Five Negroes. It was, it says, to be sold on board the ship uh, Benin Island on a Tuesday, the 6th of May, next to, matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can find it. auctioned off big time man right here I think this is the one 
Oh, that's a different poster. Before they were calling us Negroes, they called us Hebrews. Yeah. Just bear with me. Right here. Right here. This is this picture is in this book, but instead of saying Negroes, it actually says Hebrews. And you can tell it looked like it hit. Yeah, it, it was printed like that from the ancient time. And then I'll say, oh, somebody just, uh, you know, copied and paste and moved things around. But it says right here to be sold on board the ship of Bain Island, Benin Island, on Tuesday, the 6th of May, next to, and this is part of Esau's Witchcraft and Wizardry. But in this book, it says, a choice cargo of about 150 fine, healthy hebos just arrived from the Windward Coast, Windward and Rice Coast. So it says the un it says to the utmost care has already been taken and shall be continued to keep them free from the the least danger and being infected with the smallpox. You know? So yeah, so this picture is in this book right here. But instead of saying Negroes, it says Hebos. Right? It's in this book right here. So let me continue on reading. Let me see if I can find something else, some more information in this book. But there's a there's, there's a wealth of knowledge and information in this book. It says right here, off of page 138, it says Hebrew words and names and Igbo vocabulary. In a previous chapter of this book, one can find enough evidence to show that the Igbos of Nigeria, some of whom are now permanently located in non igbo speaking areas and speak languages of those of other Gentile tribes as their mother tongue, are Hebrew descent. The evidence in the words and names contained in this chapter is merely an establishment. However, this evidence has an extra advantage of leading us to the knowledge of the tribes of the origin of the exiled Hebrews in their ancestral home of um, uh, Israel. Hebrew names and words and Igbo vocabulary. Among the Nigerian Hebrews, Hebrews or Igbos, in the world Hebrew names, I'm sorry, in world Hebrew names given to children, are selected from the immediate extended family cycle for both stocks of the Hebrews or Jews. These names are selected among the living and dead relatives, father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, uncle, nephew, etc. Sometimes someone every, sometimes or sometimes someone very dear to the father or family. Let me keep on reading. It says, this explains why the Igbos Niger, of Niger like any other Jews, raise eyebrows or ask questions if one day, or if on the day of circumcision and, ch and christening of their male child, which in traditional Igbo society is usually on the eighth day of the birth, a non-family based name is given to a newborn child. For instance, when John the Baptist was born, his name and the name John or Yakanan was announced by the mother of Elizabeth. On the eighth day, being the day of the boy's circumcision and christening, according to custom, the Hebrew neighbors and relatives present present at the ceremony were surprised and pointed out at to her, there is no one among the relatives who has that name. So not only did they name their ch children after their close relatives or special friends, uh, the boys also were circumcised on the eighth day. And I actually... One of the beloved brother Yashalam from the main camp, he's a he's of the Yoruba tribe. I think he might be of the Yoruba tribe, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but that brother he said among his people in West Africa, you get circumcised on the eighth day. And what nation of people do that? The Israelites, man, just like they did here in the Americas. We carried our customs, the Northern Kingdom as well as the Southern Kingdom. We carried our customs, albeit some a little watered down, but we carried out customs from Israel, you know, we carried them, so let's go back to Psalms, uh, it says, this is Psalms 8, 3, and 5, for they have consulted together with one consent, they are a confederate against thee, the tabernacle of Edom, the tabernacles of Edom, which is you so-called white man today, and the Ishmaelites, which is the so-called Arabs today, of Moab, which is the so-called Chinese, and the Hagarines, which I think they're, um, uh, Either Arab or Edomite people. Let me see. The Hagarines or Hagaraya, uh, uh, people dwelling in the east of Palestine, with whom the tribes of Reuben made war with, in the time of Saul. 
um, Wanderer. Yeah, I'm not sure who these people are, but it doesn't matter. They're not important. Anyway, um, oh yeah, come on. And it's, it's it acts up. My computer wants to act up. Yeah. So it says, um, the Hagar and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon. Ammon is a so-called Japanese. All right, who I think Gabal might be Edom or might be uh. Um, Arab, let me see. Gabal. Mountainous area south of the Dead Sea. Up, uh, yeah, a region in Idumia. So these are Edomites. So them Edomite houses, they right along, and the same ones that's conspiring today are the same ones that's conspiring against us now. And you even got some of our own people mixed amongst them doing that shit. So it says Gabal, which is Edomites. And Ammon, which is the so-called Japanese today, and Amalek, which is the small hats. The Philistines, the Hamites, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, say Lot. You know, so these people, they all come together, and they made a consorted effort to hide who we were. Um, I'm just going to say, it says they're hoping the children, hoping the Hebrew word there is, Zara Ya I Zara and it says shoulder hoping mighty shoulder they, they're friends political and military might they join forces and that's what you have today these Edomite nations are jo have joined uh, shoulder to shoulder with these the children of Lot and if you look at the, the world today these people are the ones that are plaguing our people with through oppression you know and they even had little ones the ones that are no non-significant amongst their nation, they even look down on Jake. And they look at us as a no people and as a people that are greatly despised. Okay? So it says, uh, we was in, we was done on that. John, this is the book of John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to but for the steal and to kill. And that's all Esau does. He still he he steals and he kills and he destroys. That's Esau's uh MO or uh mode of operandi all right and to destroy i come that they might have life and that they might have more have it more abundantly and how shy has done that all right another uh video i had that shows some of the uh you know the wickedness of esau this is from a, a video that i was watching earlier dame dash a former record producer or whatever record older i mean a record ceo he has this to say on someone, the guy from Comedy Height, the same one that interviewed Nate. Um, he asked, why don't we have more men, manly men amongst our people? And this is what Dan Jazz's reply is. More, more men like that. Have more, more men. Time that it wasn't so safe. Right. Why, don't we, why don't we have more, more men like that? I don't know. I think uh, we're being programmed to get away from 100% of what a man is supposed to be. Which is which is absolutely you know? right. And who's the cause of that? Esau Edom. He destroyed the man. He destroyed the man. And once you get the man out of the household, you take the man out of the picture, you reduce his importance to nothing. And you can do what you want with a nation, man. And that's what the 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 uh, the Hamites did in ancient Egypt. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse uh, 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass, that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto their enemies. I'm sorry, unto our enemies. And fight against us so get them up out of the land because even prior to them putting us in hardcore captivity they were still very uh discriminatory against our people man there were laws in the books where uh egyptians couldn't sit and eat with a, a israelite or a sheep they call the sheep herders right it says therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them and just like the pharaoh of old the pharaoh of today which is esau edom He's doing the same thing to us. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built 
for Pharaoh treasure cities at Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. And this is the same thing that happened today. These Esau can't understand all the oppression that he's done to our people. How are they still procreating? How are they still uh, birthing in numbers? We take the best of their people and we make them puppets. We make them entertainers. We make them athletes. We make them uh, um, slaves to us. But why are these people are still here? And if Esau could have it his way, we would just be taken out of the picture. You know, if you had like right now, you got a migrant crisis going on or uh, south of the border. Right. What if all them people were a bunch of fucking, uh, I don't know, Ukrainians or, 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 or Swedish people, man. Hey, when they was bringing in them Swedes, they were they were comfortable, man. But when they bring in Jake from these South American countries, man, they catch nothing but hell. Nothing but hell. You know, they claim that everybody is the, the worst of the worst and all of this shit because they don't want us here. You know, and then you know the kingdom, Israelites, you so bonehead, you think that you are accepted because you you may not look like your brothers of the southern kingdom. But they don't want you either. All that ass kissing you doing, they want to destroy you too. Especially the men. So it says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made it the children of Israel to serve with rigor, which we're not supposed to do. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, which Esau is doing that today, and mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of, of the one was Shipra and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew woman and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye shall live. Why did he let the, the daughters live, the female child live? Because she wasn't a threat. He could procreate with her. He could make a, a maid servant. He could sell her off and then she'd be good. I mean, he'd be good. She not, she don't have no real force. The force comes with the children of the, the, the sons of Israel. When you, when you see children there, it's really speaking of the, the sons. Okay, that word for children there in uh, verse 13 is bun. They say bun, but no, it's bun or bunya. All right, bun, which is what? A son, a grandson, a child member of a group, a male child. All right. And just like the Pharaoh of old fear the male child uh, of, of, of old, the same thing they do today. They fear us. They fear that male child. If you ain't, again, if you ain't entertaining, if you ain't shooting a hoop, if you ain't doing what the will of Esau, they're against you, man. They don't want you, you know, unless they sexually exploiting you or some shit like that. But how, anything outside of those parameters, you're a threat, especially if you know this truth. All right? Because this is what they do. All right? You know, you know how they do. Pastor Hart, I can hear Pastor Hart saying that right now. You know how they do. Because they know what time it is. This is the book of Judah, chapter 5. And I want to go straight to the point because I know this lesson is getting a bit long. Um, it says, uh, I'll start at uh, 6. Judah 5 and 6. These people are descendant of the, Ch of the Chaldeans. Right? That's where we come from. We come from... We're not Africans. Our forefather Abraham came out of uh, Ur of the Chaldees, man. All right? And they sojourned hitherto in Mesopotamia, which is modern-day Iraq, because they would not follow the gods of, of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. So our forefather Abraham, he didn't want to follow the idols of his fathers, Terah and the rest of them. And the Most High chose them out of all that, the men, because those were sons of God anyway, but they were going off. and he left. He left. The Lord told him to leave. So he left in the land of Chaldea. Verse 8. It says, For they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the power of heaven, the power of whom they knew, which is Yahweh Bashiach Shah. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. Right? Then their power commanded them to be, depart from the place where they sojourned. And go into the land of Canaan, which is Israel, where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and with very much cattle. And again, a great, a great uh, uh, illustration of that is this right here. You know, we don't have any of these things now, but these are the things that make you wealthy in this world. 
gold, silver, cattle, land. That's the real wealth, not FRNs. But all that was stolen from us by the Edomites. Let's keep on reading. It says, uh, verse 10, but when famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there while they were nourished and became there a great multitude so that one could not number their nation, right? Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them, which we just read, and dealt subtly, subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt, which with incurable plagues, so that the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And the Heavenly Father dried up the Red Sea before them, and they brought them to Mount Sinai and caves Barnet, and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and they destroyed, and they destroyed by their strength all them of Esbon passing over Jordan. They possessed all the hill country, says, and they cast forth before them the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Sycamites, and all the Gergesites. And they dwelt in the country, in that country many days. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered because the, the, the power that, because the God that hated iniquity was with them. So whenever we follow the Lord's law, sets and commandments, the Lord was with us, man. You know, that's why in this world, part of that consorted effort to deny who we are and to hide who we are is to keep us living in a perpetual state of sin and iniquity. Everything we do in this world is, is going off. Everything we do, everything we touch, wear, eat, smell, taste, whatever, it it, it got us going off in one way or another. Okay? Because the man, the son, the son of perdition, the man, the superman of iniquity, Esau, Edom, he's ruling. All right? So it says, uh, and whilst they sin not before their God, they prospered because the God that because the God that hateth iniquity was with them, right? But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles. Exactly. Very sore. So when we didn't follow the Lord, guess what? He He made it happen to where we lost. And that's why we're in the condition that we're in today. But we're also being raised up. So call on Yahweh Bashan al for that. And were led captives into the land, into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. And their cities were taken by their by the enemies. But now are they returning to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill countries of uh, Slakia, in the hill country, for it was desolate. Right? This is after the first temple was destroyed. But if there be no iniquity in their in their nation, let my Lord now pass by lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. And when Achor had finished saying, saying, uh, finished these sayings, all the people standing round about of the tent murmured, and the chief men of Holofernes and all that dwelt by the seaside in Moab spake he should kill him, right? Because they got mad that he was telling the truth, you know? They got mad that, uh, you know, Acor was telling the truth. And that's why not only do they know who we are, they keep you in a uh, a delusional and a uh, a disruptive state, for lack of better words, because that's a part of them hiding. That's a part of them covering the cash. That's a part of them lying. But they know exactly that we're the Israelites. It's a fact. It's a fact. Okay? There's no way that a movement like this that's all around the world can be unseen. As smart as Esau claims to be, as intricate and as invasive and as, you know, um, uh, intrusive this devil is, you try to tell me that you don't know that the Israelites are standing up across the four corners of the globe and the only time they mention us is when they do it in a disparaging way. Because again, they won't tell you who you are. You know, you could be everything in the world except the child of God. You know, that's why they got people like Vocab Malone set up to do what? To lie, to just try to disparage the brothers that are young or maybe weak in the faith, to try to pull them back into Christianity, which there's no hope in Christianity. There's no value in Christianity of any of the denominations, none at all. 
But this is what they're doing. They try to take them in. They try to take them in and destroy them. They already they fagged you out. They gave you uh um they fagged you out. They gave you GMO. They gave you PET. You know what I'm saying? They gave you uh, uh um a whole bunch of just weapons. They gave you drugs. You know they gave you prom promiscuity. They gave you the ghetto, and they just knew that you would be destroyed. So that's why it sickens them to see the men of the Lord standing up. They're afraid, like the scripture says in Ezekiel 37. Okay? These people are completely afraid because they know what come behind it. You get too many people calling on the name of Yahweh Bashan he's going Shai, he's going to turn up for them, and he is. The scripture says it in Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 19. Isaiah 59 and 19. Isaiah 59 and 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashiach Shai, from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When an enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashiach Shai, shall lift up a standard against him. So the Lord is going to lift up that, that standard against you devils. He's going to give his men spiritual powers. Okay, we're going to be running through your armies like a, a hot knife through butter. You know, he's going to send his angels to protect us. Shit, we might have force fields around us. Blocking bullets, blocking missiles, and, and all kinds of shit. Okay? That's the kind of power that we deal with. And that's the kind of power that this devil going to have to deal with when Yahweh Shai do it. And so what Esau, he's waiting. He's waiting until the Lord allow him to hit that go button, which can be very soon. could be the summer. It could be this fall, winter. But it's definitely coming, man. The Lord is going to deliver his elect. He's going to deliver his people that's called on his name. He's going to deliver his people that he for he he ordained from the foundations of the earth to be saved out of this captivity. He delivered us from every captivity that we've ever been in. What you think he's not going to do it now? Okay, so this has been there has been a consorted effort to hide us. I hope that you were edified. I hope that you got something out of it. I think I was able to hit all the tabs. Okay, I think I was able to do that, and you know I pray that you were edified. And that you watched the whole video and got something out of it. Okay. And with that, I'll say shalom on to the next.